Hello and welcome to the video. Now this might end up being a couple of videos because what I intend to do is take this model here. This is what it'll look like towards the end of this video where I initially built it. You might remember this is the Phinoceros Skull 3 frame and I did a quick build on it, stuck beta flight on it and on the end I asked everybody should I put iNav on this and show how you do the conversion? And the big answer from everybody on YouTube, massive thank you to everyone that kind of got back in touch, was yes, please. Now, I've been dealing with iNav for a very long time. If you search for iNav in my playlist, you'll find that the very first iNav thing that I built was a little quadcopter. In fact, I was one of the first people to really start producing lots of videos about iNav because I really like the idea of having solid GPS flight modes on things like quadcopters. But the really cool thing about iNav is once you understand how iNav works, you don't just have to limit yourself to quads. You can also stick it on things like fixed wing. In fact, if you check out my iNav 2.1 series, I put it on three or four different kind of airframes. So it's a very versatile bit of software. It shares an awful lot in common with Betaflight. Uh, but before I get in and we start putting the GPS and bits and pieces onto this model and doing the configuration, because uh, there are a few differences, if you're familiar with Betaflight, to change over to iNav, let me talk a little bit about why you want to look at iNav over Betaflight, particularly as Betaflight today has something called GPS Rescue Mode, which is still classed as experimental, but lots of pilots have had a good experience with it. Now, iNav and Betaflight are actually very, very closely related. Uh, not as closely as they used to be, but they're both forks of a project called CleanFlight that those of you that have been in the hobby for a little while will remember with a little bit of fondness. Now, CleanFlight, headed by a gentleman called Dominic Clifton, was the reason that things like Betaflight and iNav exist. He cleaned up the code base that we're using here from something called BaseFlight, which was actually recoding of something called MultiWii. See, it just goes back and back and back. And where Betaflight was a fork of CleanFlight to focus on racing, uh, iNav was a fork of CleanFlight to go away and work on the GPS stuff. And luckily, both of them use the very similar interface. So if you know the configurator from Betaflight, you'll be able to navigate your way around the configurator with iNav. However, the iNav configurator, as you can see here, has a lot of extra little things. Now, iNav has some advantages over Betaflight in a couple of key areas. The first area is that it has excellent, fully autonomous GPS flight modes. So you can do things like GPS loiter, where if you're in a wing, it flies in a big circle. If you're in a quad, it just sits there in the air and kind of doesn't move. It's very good. You can also do GPS return to home. Uh, the GPS return to home will fly back to you, stop, pause, and then land and then disarm itself, where rather than the beta flight GPS rescue at the moment won't do that final landing phase. So if you don't have the ability to connect back to the model to take over control, it doesn't matter with iNav, it'll kind of land and just take care of itself. And that's really good for both people who are learning to fly because that, that fail safe is there. And if they get confused, lose orientation, they can just hit that return to home oh dear button and the model will fly back to them. And then they can take it out of that mode once they feel confident again and carry on flying. Uh, good for things like FPV. If you're going to be flying to the edge of your range or somebody near you turns on a video transmitter, stomps all over your video signal so you lose the FPV view of your model and your spotter's struggling to tell you exactly where it is, flick the return to home switch and back it comes. But there are a couple of things to be aware of with iNav as well. Uh, this isn't as slick as Betaflight in terms of all the racing bits and pieces. In fact, although we have D-Shot in iNav now, uh, iNav development team are very wary of D-Shot, even things like D-Shot 600. And as you can see, when we select it later in the series, iNav will kind of give you a big warning. Uh, now, D-Shot's been around for a long time and it's been working great in things like Betaflight. But because of the different ways they're approaching these projects, you have those kind of different changes. It can be a little bit more involved to tune as well. Some of the advantages in the most recent versions of Betaflight haven't made it across into iNav. And these two projects kind of populate each other. And a lot of the developers are actually in common. So for me, if I'm going to be racing and it's all about racing and I'm just doing it in the field and I have my failsafe set up and I'm confident on that, I'm going to use Betaflight. 
If, however, I'm going to have an Explorer or a Freestyle Quad that I'm going to be taking in and around places, and then I want that GPS safety net, then I'm going to go for iNav. Or, of course, if I'm going to use a plane, I'm going to use iNav instead. So hopefully that explains what the differences are between them. Beast flight for racing, pure racing. This, if you want GPS modes, that is a little bit more than just a GPS rescue that may or may not bring it back to you. All models running beta flight won't necessarily run iNav if you want all the GPS extra bits and pieces. You're going to have to download the iNav configurator. If you just Google for iNav configurator download or iNav flight configurator download, it'll take you to the GitHub page. I'll put a link in the description below if you can't find it. There's versions there for Linux, Windows 32, 64 and Macs as well. So irrespective of what you're running, you should be able to get the configurator to work. You can't use the beta flight configurator for iNav and vice versa because each of those different brothers in code have some different things that they're looking for and they don't understand each other's software. The iNav wiki itself is excellent. If you're thinking of doing this I would put aside a little bit of time and just go through that wiki to make sure you're comfortable with everything in there and you're clear about what it is you're getting into. In terms of hardware, you're going to need a spare UART on the flight controller. The one that we have on this model here, this has a couple of spare UARTs. I was wiring up one for camera control, which I'm never going to use. So I'm going to reuse that one to connect to the GPS. You also need two pins on the flight controller, which are going to be called something like SDA and SCL, and those are the I squared C pins that are used for the compass. Now, the compass is actually housed in the GPS module itself and you want the compass as far away from any electromagnetic fields on the model as you possibly can. If I very quickly show a picture of that early version of the iNav quadcopter that I very first built, you'll see that the GPS is up here on a great whacking tower. Now you don't need to be quite that careful if you aren't running super high powers and you are careful with the way that you route all the power wires but you don't want your GPS right on top of the battery or right on top of the wires going to the motors. That current and power that's flowing around will knock the compass out of alignment. And for those of you that are interested in why iNav needs a compass to work on a quadcopter where beta flight GPS rescue doesn't, then I would point you towards this video of mine here. This video called Why Do I Need a Compass explains it all in quite a bit of detail. And apart from those couple of things, you're obviously going to need the external compass. There is a couple that you can choose from. Uh, I've got the BN880 here. These are relatively inexpensive. You can get them for about less than £15 or $15, $17. And it has the external compass in here. It has all the GPS features and it's relatively small. It's only about an inch per side, so it'll fit pretty much anywhere. But you do need a flat surface, which is why I've 3D printed this bracket for it to sit on in front of the model. But the first thing I would do if your model has Betaflight on it, connect it up to Betaflight and go through and just take screenshots of all of the different pages, particularly things like the port configuration. That will speed it up when you come to do the iNav configuration later on. Also, do a diff and save that to a file. If you ever want to go back to Betaflight, that means that you just download and install the same version of Betaflight that's on it already. And you can then apply the diff file and everything will be back to how it was before you started this adventure. I also similarly like to take a dump of all of the settings inside Betaflight and keep that handy just for reference. So it means you can always go back and you have everything documented. Next thing to do then is to flash iNav. Flashing iNav is exactly the same as flashing Betaflight. So you download the configurator, connect to it, select the board that you're interested in. This of course is the Matec 722 and then select the version of iNav that you want and click flash and it'll work the same way. You may need to use Zadig or something else to replace the driver for the board but if you've already been flashing this on the computer with things like Betaflight the drivers are probably already set up for DFU and it will finish all of the flashing relatively straightforward. It'll look and feel very, very similar to flashing beta flight. Once it's done, just connect to it, just move the model around and make sure that you can see it and everything's working. And now we have the flight controller with iNav installed, but nothing is configured. So the main job that we need to do now is to install the compass and the GPS. Now this BN880 here has all of the pins on the side noted, which is voltage, ground, uh, the two transmit and receive pins for the compass, and there's two extra ones, which are those I squared C pins. 
So by looking at that and figuring out what all the colors are, I've just made this little reference for me so I'm not squinting at the side of the GPS and compass when I'm trying to wire everything up. So the I squared C pins are going to be the gray and yellow ones. And then we have the red wire, surprise, surprise, is the plus five volts, black wire is ground, and the green and white wires in the middle are the receive and transmit pins that we're going to connect to the UART that we were using for the camera, but we're now going to use for GPS. So first thing to do is free up that UART, desolder the couple of pins that were on there for the camera control. And now I've got that out of the way, I can also find where the SDA and the SCL pins are. Now flipping the board over, they're underneath, so I'm going to have to tin those two pads. So I'm going to connect the five volts ground and the transmit and receive wires, as you've shown here, you need to have the transmit pin from the GPS connected to the receive pin on the UART and vice versa. And that's that bit connected. And then secondly, I need then to connect up the SDA and SCL lines. So I need to connect the yellow wire, which is the data wire to the SDA pin. And I need to connect the clock wire or SCL serial clock to the gray wire and those are all the connections we need. I can now put everything back together and then install the GPS. Now this 3D printed bracket on the top here, um, make it available on Thingiverse. So if you want to go and download it for your Skull 3, then you absolutely can. Uh, just be really careful about where you place the compass. Um, it should be okay where I'm doing it here. There are reports of some of things like the Tarsia cameras and some of the, the dual lens HD cameras uh, putting out quite a lot of RF noise, which can affect things like this. But as it's only just a good old run cam underneath, it should be fine. But if it isn't, then we may have to put a little bit of shielding around it just to protect it from stray electromagnetic fields. But I'm going to pop the compass on the top, going to secure it with some double sided tape that it came with and then put some heat shrink over the top and then heat shrink it and pop it into place. So now with everything together, that's what it looks like. Amazingly, we've already been going for quite a while. So enjoy me in the next video where we'll connect to it and we'll actually start the configuration. There are some extra additional steps with calibration and also things like setting up the compass and GPS, but most of it, if you've set up beta flight before, is going to feel very familiar. So join me in that next video where we'll go through the INAV configuration and I'll demo things like the GPS return to home and what the GPS loiter looks like too. Thanks for watching the video and watching right to the very end. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you like the video and like what I'm doing here, then hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification icon too. If you really like what I'm doing, you can go the extra mile and become one of my Patreons for access to me directly for support and also giveaways and regular updates too. If you're looking for particular content, then check out the playlist. I organize all of my videos into playlists. So if you're looking for a particular topic, you can find everything here. If it's called Introduction To, it's designed to start very simply and build on that simple introduction to teach you all about it. If it's called For Beginners, then that is really aimed at people who are brand new to that part of the hobby. You can also search on YouTube for anything that you're interested in using the search function at the top. So iNav Painless 360 will find all of my videos and even the playlists around iNav. So thanks again for watching and happy flying.